Hi, and welcome back to our channel. I am Sarah, a fertility nurse, mom of three, and today we're gonna discuss hormones, specifically hormone imbalances, how to spot it, what we can do to treat it, and what we can do on a daily basis to help regulate our hormones. I thought we would do a kind of informal sit down chat. I almost wore my nursing jacket, but I thought that's a little bit too much. <laughs> Let's discuss hormones. I'm going to leave you guys with five tips at the end of this video, how to balance your hormones. I'm super passionate about my job and hormones are a huge part of that. However, it's not just relating to fertility. Hormones affect all of us every single day. Sarah, I can't take my blood at home. What are some signs that I can kind of look for? Weight gain is a big indicator for many, many individuals. That is a tricky one because a lot of us gain weight, lose weight, but excessive weight gain and very rapidly is often a sign of hormone imbalance. Also extreme difficulty of losing weight. Say you do everything right. You exercise, you stick to a good healthy eating plan and just nothing is happening. You're not losing weight, you're not gaining weight, but you're absolutely, none of your efforts seem like they are taking effect. Fatigue, we're all chronically tired anyway, but being excessively tired without kind of a way to pinpoint why, chronic pain, just overall body aches, pains, decreased or increased heart rate is another one that we don't talk about very, very often. Tying it back to the fertility side of things, disruption of ovulation cycles, perhaps not ovulating at all, missed, heavy, irregular periods, excessive hair on the face, and the chin, as well as acne. Acne specifically on the upper back, chest, and face. Now that we kind of know what we're looking for in terms of hormonal imbalance and how to spot it in your day-to-day -day life, what causes it? Some are completely out of our control. The main cause points of hormonal imbalance do include our thyroid gland and our thyroid hormone includes increased stress. Another major cause is eating disorder. I think it's really important to discuss five major hormones, what they do, what's the point of them, so that we kind of have a better understanding of why do we even really need to care about this? That includes cortisol, insulin, testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone. Cortisol, what makes that so important? Don't drink too much coffee, you'll spike your cortisol, or don't get too stressed out about that exam, you'll spike your cortisol. Cortisol is a steroid hormone and our body uses it as a stress alarm. What happens is blood sugars are then sent into the bloodstream. This hormone helps to curb and slow down non-essential body functions so that the rest of your body can go into fight or flight mode, insulin. Very, very important. How we provide our bodies with food, insulin provides our cells with energy. Another really good hormone to touch on is estrogen. For both male and female is extremely important. It may be a little bit of a shocker to realize that men have estrogen too. Estrogen is a group of hormone. We have estradiol, estriol, esterone. It is responsible for the development and regulation of the female reproductive system and for female secondary sex characteristics. Men also have estrogen circulating in their body and it is extremely important hormone for them, although they sit at much lower levels than females. All human bodies need estrogen to function normally. Estrogen, believe it or not, can actually help control cholesterol levels, can help maintain bone health and heart health. In Balances in estrogen can affect our mood, our skin, as well as other body tissues. Another hormone is progesterone. Again, both male and female have circulating progesterone, excreted in the ovaries, in the placenta, as well as the adrenal gland. Progesterone has many, many roles, and one of the big ones for the female reproductive system is controlling the lining of the uterus or the endometrium. This is extremely important when trying to conceive as well as during and maintaining a pregnancy. Progesterone even promotes changes in breast tissue so that women can go on to lactate post-pregnancy. 
low progesterone is thought to be one of the main causes of menopausal symptoms. Last hormone that I think we should touch on that is super important for both male and female, believe it or not, is testosterone for females produced in the ovaries and the adrenal glands. And specifically for females, when it is combined with estrogen, it helps with the growth and maintenance of the reproductive system and bone mass. What are five things that we can do on a daily basis to try to regulate our hormones? Sleep. Sleep is a huge one. I know you've heard it from your mom growing up, heard it from everybody. Well, now you're going to hear it from me because sleep has a huge, huge impact on our hormones. I get it. Look at these eye bags. <laughs> can understand and appreciate how difficult it truly is to get good sleep. <laughs> More difficult to do than you would actually believe is reducing light in the evening. In the day and age of social media, TikTok, Instagram, social media, it's non-stop. YouTube. <laughs> I should mention you too. Quite often we're using it at night. We're using it in the darkness, in the bedroom. I am guilty of that. Managing stress. How do we do that? The answer is different for everybody, but if you can find a way to reduce stress on a daily basis, even if it's just a little bit extra time just for yourself, if it's just a bubble bath, nice warm drink that you like that you can have a few minutes to yourself or saying no to working that extra long shift. We know already by discussing that one of the common triggers of imbalancing our hormones is stress to begin with, which then stresses us out. <laughs> exercising. I know it is the answer for everything and so hard to find time for. I'm not saying that you have to join the gym, that you have to work out two to six hours a day, that you have to become a bodybuilder. Exercising, adding in 20 minutes a day, elevating your heart rate above your natural resting rate is considered exercise. Another one, I am not too happy to share this one with you guys, but again, I want to say obvious, but maybe it's not to everybody, is sugars. You know how we talked about insulin, about how cortisol pushes sugars into our bloodstream under stress. Having excess amount of sugars can significantly impact our hormones. Throw it all out of whack. I may have ordered a cake for Tuesday, called a Tuesday cake. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. You can also find us on Instagram. Because this was a little bit different of a video, let me know if you guys wanna see more health-related content, fertility-focused content. I can definitely continue to make videos much like this one. Let me know what else you guys would like to hear in terms of health, in terms of fertility. Little baby wanted to join us. You just woke up. Mommy is discussing hormones, honey, and how it can affect us on a daily basis, what we can do to improve them, how to spot them. Yeah, you have little hormones as well. Yeah. All right, hope you guys have a great day.